So hopefully you can get what that video is suggesting to us. Because of what God has done for us through Jesus, through rescuing us from all of the rotten and rebellious and rubbish stuff that we've done in our lives, and because we're reunited back with God, we can now worship him. We can thank him. We can sing his praises, not just with our voices on a Sunday, but we can worship him with all our bodies, all of the time, whatever we're doing, wherever we are. This is massive, really, when you think about it, that our lives now have, a, we have an opportunity before us to be able to really thank God for all that he has done. And that includes our sport. See, sport is a great thing, isn't it? It's a chance to burn off some steam. It's a chance to make friends. We love winning. We hate losing. All these things are great things. But now, sport takes on a completely new level. Our sport is also an opportunity for us to use the bodies God's given us to be able to not just go and worship him, but not just that, but also to go and shine for him and make him known to the people around us. Here's the big point I want you to hear this morning. What we do with our lives and our bodies and how we compete in our sport really matters. How we compete really, really matters. We've just got one verse this morning to look at. You might be pleased to know. Just one verse. But let's really work hard to understand it just for a few minutes, shall we? It's literally the next verse along from the ones we were looking at yesterday. Kirsten, can you read it for us, please? Yeah, sure. So live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Live wisely. See what he's saying? Your actions matter. Your behavior is important to think about. Live wisely, especially around other people. Right, talk to your neighbor. What do you think it means to live wisely? What does it mean to live wisely? Have a chat. I wonder what you think. So what do you think it means to live wisely? Oh, um... Probably like studying quite hard and like learning things. Um, I usually think of someone that's maybe quite clever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sort of a thing. Yeah, I wonder if you said something similar. To be wise, to have knowledge about something, to know something really well. I think it is that, definitely. To have wisdom is to know things. But to live wisely is slightly different, isn't it? To live wisely is to let all of your knowledge and your understanding about things to affect the, the behaviors around you and the decisions that you make. Otherwise, you're just a knowledgeable person. <laughs> you just know stuff, but you don't do anything in light of it. To live wisely is to know stuff, but to let that change your behavior. And think about it in sport a little bit, yeah? We all know these things. Would it be wise for someone in mid-rowing race to jump out of the boat and try and change places with their fellow rower. That would be weird. It would be absolutely ridiculous, wouldn't it? Would it be wise for an ice hockey player to take to the ice in trainers? What do you think? Not if they valued their toes. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Would it be wise for a goalkeeper to use oven mitts, you know, like the ones that are joined together to try and save a penalty? Ridiculous, wouldn't it? They can't separate hands further than this. Would it be wise for a cricket player to go out with just little tiny little football shin pads on and that's the only bit of padding? No. It'd be foolish, wouldn't it, to do all these different sporting events in that kind of way? No. We know certain things, don't we, about water, about ice, about hard cricket balls. We know stuff about the size of a goal. We know those things. Therefore, it informs our decisions. We act differently because of it. And so Paul is saying here, live wisely. Let your knowledge actually affect your behavior and do live wisely amongst other people. But why does he say live wisely as a Christian amongst people who aren't Christians? Well, I think what's really important to remember here is Paul is writing to a church of just a few Christians in a big town where there's hardly anyone else who at the time is following Jesus. They're really in the minority and he really wants to make sure they understand that people are watching them. People are going to see their lives. Kristen, are you uh, in your hockey team? Mm -hmm. Are you the only Christian or are there loads of others? Um, there's one other. Okay, so, so two of you in how big is the squad roughly? Oh, maybe like 40, 45. Okay, yeah. and you play in an Edinburgh league? I do, yes. And how many teams? Oh, about 10. 10, 10 so. teams. How many Christians do you know across all of those 10 teams? Oh, maybe only another three or four. Okay, I would okay. Know, yeah. 
So we're talking potentially there could be about 400 female hockey players mm -hmm. in your league alone, and to your knowledge, probably single figures yeah. of actually Christians. See, this is the reality in the world of sport around us. There's loads of people who play sport, but there's not that many who are Christians playing in those clubs and teams. And so how we live, how we live out our faith through the way that we compete and play in our sport, it really matters because people are watching. People are seeing you. People are interested in the decisions you make, in the way that you react, in all the conversations that you have. We are, another part of the Bible says, like ambassadors for God in our sports teams. An ambassador is someone who maybe represents a country in another country. You represent them. And Paul is saying here, we need to live wisely because we're almost like ambassadors for God in the world of sport around us. But there's a really crucial word in all of this. Let's get that verse back up. See what he says here. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. See, maybe you sat there and you think, okay, I, I, I need to live for God. I need to be an ambassador in my sport. And the emotion that can sometimes come with that is, Oh, that's really overwhelming. That actually can be a bit of a burden to us. But do you see how Paul is uh, telling us? He says it's an opportunity. See, please don't hear me saying this morning that suddenly, if you've become a Christian and you're a sports person, you suddenly have to keep the rules absolutely perfect. You have to be like the best man of the match or, or woman of the match, or whatever it is in your sport, every single time. That you've got to be the perfect example to everyone around you all of the time. We get things wrong. We mess it up. And actually, when we think that way, it puts a lot of pressure on us, doesn't it? To have to perform all the time. Paul's saying, no, live wisely and see the opportunity that it is to be able to shine bright for God. See, living wisely is for your good. God's design is for your good. When he asks us to live his way, he not only gives us things that are for our good, he promises to help us with it. He wants you to live wisely. He wants you to have the best life possible. He wants you to make the most of the opportunities around you. And he's committed to helping you do that all the way. Think about it a bit like this, Kirsten. A uh, hundred meter sprint, mm -hmm. yeah? You've got a hole packed out. You've got the people on the track. You've got the fans in the stand. You've got the coaches watching on. It's a busy, busy place with loads of people. Here's the question. Okay. Where's God in that place? Ooh. Mm, interesting thought, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Where might he be? Is God like the coach behind the blocks giving you a pep talk? You can do it. Come on. Go for it. Give it your all. Don't slip up. Don't make a mistake. Mm. Is God in the stand, maybe like a parent, cheering you on? Woohoo, you can do it but very little influence going on in that place? Or is God like the official at the end of the track with the stopwatch, ready to time you, to see whether you make the cut, compare you to everyone else? See, he's none of them. He's not the coach behind you, just giving you a pep talk. He's not the parent on the side, just cheering you on. And he's not the official trying to keep track. Do you know where God is in all of this? He's the oxygen in your lungs. He's the person who can actually make you run and be with you through every single step of that 100 meter sprint. See, when we begin a relationship with God, he is committed to helping us live with him and live for him in our sport. It's for our good to live wisely. We really can go and thank God for all that he's done for us through the way that we play. He's created you. He knows what's best for you. He's given you the skills and the abilities to go and play. And you know what? He's got good plans and purposes prepared for you. He knows what's happening next week. He knows what's happening in your sport next season. And he wants you to go and make the most of that opportunity with him. Just take one moment to reflect with, the, with your neighbor again. What do you think it might mean then in your sport to live wisely? Think about your specific sport some of the different skills or the different challenges you make. Tell your neighbor next to you, what might it look like to do one thing that's a little bit wiser as a Christian in your sport if you were to? Go for it. Chat about it. All right?
Kirsten, um, so you've you've talked us through your story a little bit of becoming a Christian. Yep. Over the last few years then, how have you found living God's way, following what the Bible is encouraging us to live? How have you found that experience? Um, yeah, I think being honest, there's been a few challenges and that's very normal. But ultimately, I have actually just loved it because I recognise that God's plan is the best plan for me. And it's a bit like what we were talking about yesterday. Although, you know, I may want certain things and I maybe have a, a plan for how I think my life should go, I can ultimately trust that God's plan is bigger and better and with love overall, you know, he's doing what he does because he loves me mm. and I can just take such a comfort in that. Yeah, absolutely. So hear this first point clearly this morning, okay? Paul is encouraging us to live wisely because living wisely is for our good. It is for your good. But more than that, it's for the good of your friends as well. When you choose to live wisely and live out God's way and try and think about how your faith affects the way that you play your sport, it's only going to be a good thing for your friends around you. Hopefully they're going to see you be more forgiving or kind or loving or patient. Maybe they're going to see you have a little bit more self-control than other people around you. Maybe they start to see that you can be really trustworthy and they can rely on you to give your all. And they know that the highs or the lows won't actually change you too much. See, it's a really good thing when we live wisely because our friends will see something different within us. And Paul is really encouraging the people that he's writing to and us today to think about it, to not just clock in on your sport, tie your shoelaces off and off you go. No, include God in the way that you compete in your sport and the behaviours that you choose to live out because people notice and people will ask questions. There's a story, Kirsten, of a lad who went to university a few years ago who was a really keen footballer. Uh, he went to the university in the first few weeks of the trials. He just made the cut for the university first team. He was a really good player, but it was a really high standard. And for the first half of the season, he was training hard, training hard, training hard, but he didn't ever get a shot in the first team. He kept getting left off the bench, and sometimes he would make it onto the bench and he'd get himself five, ten minutes towards the end of the game. But he kept persevering because he loved his football and he wanted to be a Christian in that place. Well, just after the Christmas break, he comes back, first few weeks of training, and eventually gets his first start in the university first team. He was buzzing. It was an away trip. So they got told to pick up their kit, get to the bus stop, and the bus was picking them up for the long away trip. Off they go, pre-match nerves. He was buzzing, but he was a little bit nervous at the same time. And eventually they get to the ground and they walk into the changing room and everyone's just unpacking their kit. And all of a sudden this gasp comes from the other side of the changing room. Oh no! It was the captain. The captain had forgotten his boots. Ah oh, no. Everyone realized that's not a good thing. Started asking around, anyone got spare boots? No one's got any spare boots. And no one wanted the captain to miss out. This lad, first year, fresher, looks at his boots and he goes, here, have mine. The captain says, you, really? Yeah, you're better than me. We need you to play. Have mine. To everyone's shock and amazement, this guy was willing to actually give his boots to his captain so his captain could play. And he actually missed out on that time. But see, they started to ask questions. Why did he do that? I mean, you've been waiting half the season to have a game. Surely, like of all the times where you wanted to play, you would have held onto your boots. And he said, no, do you know what? My life's much bigger than my football. And actually, God's given me some great gifts in my life, mainly my faith in Jesus Christ. He was kind to me and showed me great love. And actually, I just want to show you that right now. And off the back of that, loads of conversations happened. And he did end up getting lots of game time as well. But in that moment, imagine that pressure, imagine that emotion in that moment. With God's help, he was able to do something that was both wise, but also incredibly distinct. That his friends started asking questions and they noticed it. See, what does it look like for you to be wise in the way that you play your sport? To make the most of all the opportunities amongst your friends who don't know Jesus. The way you treat the referees, the way you relate to the opponents, the way you deal with challenges off the pitch and on the pitch, the songs you sing, the drinks people drink, the conversations that go round. 
the injuries that you face, the wins and trophies you get, as well as the losses and the relegations you face. What does it look like in all of those different things to shine bright, to be an ambassador for God, to live wisely? That's the challenge of the day. And my last little thought for you, could it actually make you a better sports person? Could you actually improve in your sport? I put it to you, you can. Because it releases you and it frees you. Because no longer are you playing for your reputation. You play with freedom. The sport that God has given you to play. And we all know we play our best, don't we? When we're smiling and we're happy and we're free.